Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch from the Dartmouth Institute for Health Policy and Clinical Practice. I'm the first author on the recent New England Journal article entitled Breast Cancer Tumor Size, Overdiagnosis, and Mammography Screening Effectiveness. In this video, I'd like to explain our findings. Our research question was, how has screening mammography affected breast cancer size at diagnosis in the United States? And what do those trends tell us about overdiagnosis and screening effectiveness? We used two measures of breast cancer size at diagnosis. The first was size distribution, which is the number of cancers of a certain size over the total number of cancers. To make it more tangible, let's say the number of cancers less than two centimeters. And the size distribution addresses the question, what proportion of breast cancers are less than two centimeters in size? Well, here is the breast cancer size distribution among American women aged 40 and older from 1975 to 2013. And as you can see, the proportion of breast cancers that were small increased dramatically, coinciding with the initiation of widespread mammography screening. It went from 36% of all breast cancers being less than 2 centimeters to 68%. And the picture for larger breast cancers is, of course, the mirror image. In the paper, we provide a more detailed view of the changing size distribution using six size categories. But the basic point is simple. The proportion of cancers that are large has been cut in half. And that's our first finding. The introduction of screening mammography in women age 40 and older has been associated with a more favorable size distribution. The proportion of cancers that are 2 centimeters or larger has been cut in half. Now, our second measure of breast cancer size is size-specific incidence. That's the number of cancers, say, less than 2 centimeters over the total number of women. As you can see, the difference between the two measures is in the denominator. And size-specific incidence addresses the questions, how frequently are women diagnosed with cancers less than 2 centimeters? As background, let me show you the desired impact of screening on size-specific incidence. Imagine small cancers start here and large cancers start here. If screening is initiated, you expect to see the number of small cancers increase with time, but you also expect to see the larger cancers to diminish with time. In other words, the goal of screening is to move women from this curve to this curve, such that overall incidence remains relatively stable. Screening shouldn't cause cancer. So here's breast cancer size-specific incidence among women age 40 and older. And as you can see, there's a dramatic increase in the rate of tumors that are less than 2 centimeters in size. And that coincides with the initiation of widespread mammography screening. What happened to the larger tumors? Well, they went down, but only a little bit. Again, in the paper, we present a much more detailed view using six size categories. But the basic picture is pretty simple the number of large cancers has decreased only slightly, despite a dramatic increase in the number of small cancers. And that's our second finding. The more favorable size distribution is less about a decrease in the diagnosis of larger cancers and more about an increase in the diagnosis of small ones. Let's look at this picture again. As you can see from this baseline, there's been a large increase in small cancers diagnosed, but there's been a relatively small decrease in large cancers diagnosed. And this imbalance suggests substantial overdiagnosis. The detection of abnormalities that meet the pathologic definition of cancer, but which otherwise were not destined to appear. And that's our third point. These data suggest that for every woman who has had a cancer destined to become large, detected early, about four are overdiagnosed. Now, it's important to highlight the good news here, and the good news is about breast cancer mortality, 
which has fallen considerably from 1990. It's been reduced by about a third. And this decline is observed both in women of screening age and in younger women who are rarely exposed to screening. Thus, the good news is primarily about better treatment, not screening. While there's been considerable debate about whether screening has lowered mortality, there's no debate that improved treatment has lowered mortality. Now, we examined the size-specific effect of improved treatment on the 10-year risk of breast cancer death and found, for example, among women with tumors greater than 5 centimeters, their risk of death declined. And so did it for all tumor sizes. No matter what the size, treatment has improved. We went on to perform a simple approximation that I'm confident you can follow if you look at the paper to look at the relative contribution of screening and improved treatment. And we found that improved treatment must explain most of the mortality reduction. And that's our fourth finding. Because women now do substantially better with a breast cancer of any given size, improved treatment must be responsible for at least two-thirds of the reduction of breast cancer mortality. Now, there is a limitation. Because screening increases the apparent frequency of breast cancer, no one knows whether the true burden of disease has changed. We assume that the underlying probability of developing clinically meaningful breast cancer has been stable, but others might argue we are wrong, that this underlying probability has been rising. Let me show you one more graph that provides evidence that our assumption that the underlying probability of developing clinically meaningful breast cancer has been stable, that this assumption is correct. First, look at what happened to all invasive breast cancer over the period since 1975. It went up about 30% and it happened during the 1980s, during the initiation of widespread mammography screening. Now, if that had been a real increase in the amount of disease, I would expect to see some change in metastatic breast cancer, an increase in metastatic breast cancer. But in fact, you see no increase like that. Metastatic breast cancer has been stable. Furthermore, breast cancer mortality was stable. It didn't rise. Again, arguing that this increase in invasive breast cancer was in fact the result of screening. And since, of course, breast cancer mortality has declined, as I told you. We believe these patterns are most consistent with a stable underlying probability of developing clinically meaningful breast cancer, and that screening is increasing the apparent amount of disease. At this point, you might reasonably wonder, why doesn't screening work better? And the answer has to do with the heterogeneity within what we call breast cancer. And cancer heterogeneity can be represented by what's been called the barnyard pen of cancers. There are three animals in the barnyard, the birds, the rabbits, and the turtles. And the goal is not to let any of the animals escape the pen to become deadly. But no one can fence in the birds. The birds have already flown away. The birds represent the fastest growing cancers, the cancers that have already spread by the time they're detectable. Look again at that stable incidence of metastatic breast cancer, women that cannot be cured with current treatment. These are the women we'd really like to detect earlier, but mammography's been unable to do that. But that's not mammography's fault, it's the bird's fault. The cancers that grow so fast that they've already spread by the time they're detectable. Back to the barnyard. The rabbits can be corralled if you build enough fences. These are the more slowly growing cancers, the ones that may be helped by earlier detection and treatment. However, better understanding of breast cancer biology has also led to better treatments, and the better we are able to treat a disease, the less important it is to find it early. And then there are the turtles. There's nothing to corral because these cancers aren't going anywhere. The turtles represent cellular abnormalities that meet the pathologic criteria for cancer yet are not destined to progress to cause symptoms or death. This idea of non-progressive cancer used to be controversial, but is now recognized in prostate, lung, kidney, thyroid, and breast cancer. Unfortunately, looking hard for small abnormalities, screening is a recipe for finding turtles. 
but finding turtles doesn't help anyone, but it does harm them by leading to overtreatment. Here's the bottom line. One, falling breast cancer mortality is largely the result of improved treatment. Two, while screening mammography helps some women by advancing the time of diagnosis for cancers destined to become larger, more often it identifies women with small cancers that would have otherwise never bothered them. Three, for some small cancers destined to become larger, there may be no benefit from early detection because they're equally treatable at either size. And four, screening mammography is a choice. Women who feel good about screening can feel good about continuing it. Those who do not can feel equally good about not pursuing it. I hope this helps.